Hey, hey, you guys, welcome back to another YouTube video. In this one, we're going to be covering three ways that you can add Facebook tracking to your website. If you like this type of how-to video and you want to learn more about data collection, data storage, data visualization, and to take it one step further, what to do with that data, how to extract the insights, how to take action on the data that you have, then check out Better Than Data, where we're going to be teaching you not only the storage collection piece side of things, but it's heavily focused on the insights, the questions, and the actions that you can take based on the data that you have already or that we can help you uh, teach you how to collect. So if that intrigues you, you want to learn more about the strategy, the action, the insights, the questions that you can get from your data, then check out Better Than Data. Okay, let's jump into Facebook tracking on our website. The first way is going to be just adding the pixel code directly to the website. To do that, we're going to hop over to our events manager inside of Facebook. And I always, they've changed things so many times. I always never know where to get the base raw pixel code. So now we found it. It's under overview. If you scroll down just a little bit and you go to add events, click here, and then you can say from a new website, then install code manually. So this will give us our code that we are going to now go and paste into our website to add it to the website. So we're going to hit copy code. In this case, I'm going to be using WordPress. We're going to go into the back end of WordPress and we're going to use a plugin called WP Code. And the purpose of this plugin is going to be to, uh, it, it appears as code snippets here, but the plugin is called WP Code, I believe. Um, this is going to allow us to inject code into the header and the footer of the website. Now, depending on whatever your tool is, there always usually is a place where they can allow you to add code into the, either the header or the footer of your website, and it would apply globally across all the pages. This is how we do it in the case of WordPress, and I'm going to add this into the footer. So all I have to do now is just paste this in, and here we have the code. So Metapixel code, it's got things in there like my pixel ID already. So when you initialize the pixel, it, you have to tell it which pixel to initialize to. So that's there. And then we also have this FBQ command for tracking a page view. And that's all included in the base code they give you, as well as some additional no script tag here. So if JavaScript was not enabled, then they would still try and um, create an image and, and send that page view back to Facebook if JavaScript didn't exist. So a lot of times I just remove this or leave it, doesn't really matter. Um, and let's hit save changes. So the way we're going to verify this, if it worked, is view this on the front end. So let's visit the website. And then quickly, we're going to just use our pixel helper here to click on it. And then we can see that a page view event was indeed sent. So that is method number one. We're going to add the Facebook code directly onto our website. Method number two is going to be using Google Tag Manager. So what we're actually going to do here is simply just rip the code out that we just put in, and we're going to add everything into Tag Manager first, and then we're going to add Tag Manager onto the website. So let's copy this, actually cut this, come over to our uh, Google Tag Manager container. We're going to create a new tag here. So we'll go new tag configuration and custom HTML. Now I'm going to paste in the code there. So here in our custom HTML tag, we just pasted in exactly the event code that we took out of the website directly. And where do we want this code to fire? So remember with GTM, you have the what do you want and when do you want it? So we have, we want a Facebook pixel code and when do we want it? Now, no, on all pages. So we want this page view event and the initialization to happen on all pages. So let's call this plus in it. Sometimes you can actually separate the page view and the initialization into separate tags. So you could have just this, you know, code above and then up to line 11 and then stop it there in a separate tag and then use another tag for the page view events. And that way you can do like some sequencing and things like that. Um, 
in some cases that does make sense, but for now we'll just leave everything together. And now what we need to do is install GTM onto the website. The easiest way to do that is to just click on your ID right up here. So click there, click the little copy icon to add the code to our clipboard. And then let's go back to the website and add this into the header. And there's one more bit that it wants in the body or the footer. So let's copy this and let's put it down here as well. We'll save those changes. And now let's preview GTM to see if the pixel helper shows us if the Facebook pixel code is installed. So here it is. So same result. Um, you know, it is telling us that the pixel is there and we have a page view. So that is fantastic. All right, and the third method is still in Google Tag Manager. However, what we're going to do is instead of having a custom HTML tag type, we're going to use just a Facebook template tag type that we can get from the Google Tag Manager gallery. So let's pause this and let's create a new tag. But this time for tag configuration, we're going to look in the community template gallery. And so let's click into this and let's search for Facebook. Facebook archive is Facebook, uh, like themselves, like the actual official Facebook one. So Facebook pixel by Facebook Ar archive is the one we're going to check out here. So let's hit add to workspace, add all of that fun stuff. Okay, and sometimes, here it is. Okay, I was gonna say, sometimes you have to close the tag and open it again, but this will work just fine. So you can see here, now we have some additional options. Uh, first, we need to add our pixel ID. So to do that, let's go to Events Manager. Let's cancel out of this. And then head on over to Settings, where we can see the pixel ID right here. So copy that and paste it in. You can also reference a constant variable in this space. So to do that, what I would do is hit the plus, choose a variable, we would click a new one, variable configuration, the type is going to be constant, so constant value. And here we would paste that in. And then for the name, I would just call it something like constant FB pixel ID, and then I would put the pixel ID there as well. That's why I would name it, just so I always know exactly what this variable does, and then it's inputted. Now, the nice thing about constants is now wherever this variable is referenced, it'll always just reference our pixel ID as a constant value. All right, so if we have an enhanced e-commerce data layer integration already set up, then we could just tick this and it would automatically detect those e-commerce events. So not page view, but the other ones like purchase, add a cart, all of those different e-commerce events. Uh, in this case, we want to just start with the basic page view um, event here. So we're going to leave it just as a standard page view event. Enable advanced matching. You can see opens up this um, new tab here called customer information data parameters. So that would allow you if you know how to add, um, you know, first name, last name as a parameter value, then you could pass that personal details to Facebook to help it uh, increase its match rate and things like that. For now, we're going to leave this off because it's page view. We're also going to leave everything else off as well. And all we're going to do is tell it to trigger on all pages, just like the other text. So here we have recreated our Facebook based Facebook page view tag. And this also does the initialization. So you can't see kind of in the code in the background of this template, but it does do the initialization. Um, if Facebook's not already initialized, it will take care of that for you and it will track that standard page view even for us. So we'll just call it Facebook page view. Go ahead and hit save. And now what we should see is the previous custom HTML tag is paused and we have our new Facebook page view tag that is not paused. And um, let's re-preview this. Basically, there should be no change on the front end of you know, the website, we should still see that here on page view, where is it container loaded, 
we still have our Facebook page view tag fired, but it's not that custom HTML tag one that we previously did. And then of course, if we check Pixel Helper, everything should still kind of just be the same. We have our page view event and everything is working. All right, so there you have it. That is three different ways to add the Facebook tracking pixel to your website to get that going. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, want to know more about Facebook tracking, let us know in the comments below. Otherwise, we'll see you in the next video.